without further ado, uh, we'd like to kick it off with um, Elise with Share the Visit. So I'm Elise Singer. I'm a family physician and a geriatrician. This is my third venture. My second was Doximity, which is a co-founder for LinkedIn, Yammer, private network for physicians. And this is my co-founder. Hi, I'm Lisa Dussault. I've also been in a number of internet startups and done internet protocol standards. Uh, well, mostly with the IETF, I've been involved in calendar, email, HTTP, authorization, authentication, and collaboration standards. So, you know, those are the creds, it's important, but at the end of the day, um, if somebody close to you gets sick, then none of that matters. He's close. And so, um, that's exactly what happened to me. I have. Uh, a very close relative to me on the other side of the country and who is uh, really sick and of course I'm a physician I'm really used to controlling things right? I'm used to being in the loop for sure and I'm used to people talking with me and this person actually really wanted me involved in the care and um, and I wasn't there was a, a bunch of stuff happening and I just couldn't keep up and uh, it dawned on me that you know I Skype with my in-laws and South America, as it turns out, and I WebEx at work, you know, at the drop of a hat, as I'm sure all of you do, um, and what do I do to be there for somebody when they really need me and I'm not right there, and, and so that's where Share the Visit came from. Um, so we are a virtual place for the care circle, family, caregivers, physicians, others, whoever it is that belongs to that care circle. We provide a virtual place to come together with the right information at the right time about your loved one. So we started by, uh, you know, answering the pain that I personally felt by video conferencing into a medical encounter of some sort. So you can be there virtually when you uh, can't make it there in person. And um, we have a notes section so that people can take notes as things are happening and you can have that 10,000 foot view and actually keep in the loop what's going on because keeping everybody in the loop and communicating amongst the care circle it turns out is is also very difficult um, so uh, with that go ahead and log in so Joanne Fagan is daughter to Noel she's uh, what we refer to as a care circle member and uh, she just found out about a visit that's going to be taking place for her dad and so she can go ahead and schedule that uh, within share the visit and What's going to happen then is the care circle members who are consented are going to get an email that the visit's been scheduled, and if you'd like to go, you can confirm that you'll be there. Um, something that Share the Visit's doing that is really new is actually tying in modern technology to not only to the caregiving space, but particularly to healthcare. Um, and it's something that I'm guessing a lot of you have faced. You know, if you're in the 15% or something of the nation, you can actually log into a patient portal and see pieces of information that a doctor may have released to you, but nobody else sees anything else um, unless it's given to you. And uh, and for most people, they can't even do that. And certainly no uh, family or anybody like that is going to be logging in or using things like texting or email to get the right information at the right time because of HIPAA compliance. So we're really answering that. We allow the care circle to manage themselves, invite each other. We have virtual consent. We take care of um, of what you would need to take care of using texting and email, um, keeping it HIPAA compliant. Uh, and so uh, from there, I think we will go ahead and log out. So because that visit was created, and I'm part of the care circle, an email should come through showing that I've been invited. So then what's gonna happen? Speak louder, sorry. So once that uh, link comes through, I go ahead and confirm in this case that I'm going to be there. I'll confirm that I'm going to be there. Can you hear me in the back? I'll confirm that I'm going to be there. And, uh, and as you go in, there's this interstitial page that allows me to see. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's better. Oh, no, you missed everything I was saying. Okay. Um, so uh, you'll, I'll be able to see who's logged in, who's confirmed they're going to be there, who hasn't yet answered. And in this way, the care circle can really let each other figure out whether you need to be there or not. Um, in the care notes section, we time, date, author stamp. So if the doctor leaves information, that's going to matter a lot more than if my sister put it up. 
um, and people can take notes during the visit, etc. as I said. Um, so what's going to happen once the visit gets started, somebody walks in with their iPad, their iPhone, they say, Doc, you know, my daughter in Iowa, whatever it is, wanted to be there, but couldn't make it in person. We're going to share the visit. To date, we've had one doctor ever say no to this. It's something akin to having um, having somebody come to the exam room. You really have to let them in the exam room. And then the text goes out, the visit's gotten started, so if the doctor's running late, whatever it is, no problem. And you get that text, you log in, big orange button, join, and then you're going to see um, the visit. You're going to participate. And so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and see what that looks like. <coughs> Well, so um, where we are uh, working mostly at the moment, although we have some well care smattered in there, um, oncology, geriatrics, um, ICU pilot, etc. It turns out where you where you need care coordination to do your business, this tool saves time because you actually get people out to the table to the table in a timely fashion. You know, you can actually gather more information. Uh, quicker by having the right people at the table. Oftentimes patients either aren't able or aren't telling you what you need to know. So yeah, I mean, we don't pretend that this makes visits faster, but where we really rely on care coordination, which of course hopefully with the legislation and all, we're, we're heading much more towards that with ACO anyway, um, it really does help business get done. And, and uh, many people actually have coordinators and staff where they're actually paying for them um, salaries without any reimbursement just to do this care coordination type. Which is an evidence of the need. Question in the middle? Yeah. Um, how, are, there, are there interfaces to proprietary record systems to deal with? Um, there, are, there are not at present those interfaces. We've, we've looked at getting visits from the EHRs, but we are not ready to uh, <laughs> work on it, what it takes to interoperate with the HRs, if that's what you're asking. The electronic health records yeah. do have those interfaces available to us. Because we're here for client, we can take advantage of that when we when we have the bandwidth to do that programming. Right, but the the interface, the first one that we'll do probably fairly early, we'll be just dumping visits so with the dashboard, and then you just message people that a visit's been scheduled. You don't have anyone manually entering it. Um, that's number one. Number two, we're we're actually looking at. I don't know if this is a bad word or not, but we're somewhat disruptive in that we're actually letting patients, somebody accompanying them, walk in with the iPhone, iPad, and say, "Doc, this is the way it's going to be." And um, so that was a big question earlier on, but it turns out if that's not a problem, you know, it, that hasn't been a problem. Yes. A uh, question on the uh, what's the business model? Right? It's a patient one that's going to pay for the service or. 
So we have, um, at the moment, we're being paid from both ends, which is great. Um, so we're asking families and patients who find out about us and want to use us, they'll pay a monthly subscription. Um, we started at 25 a month, that may be going up. Um, and we're also mainly going through other channels. And um, we have some partnerships, assisted living, etc. And they actually um, sponsor a certain number of bundled license or seats for generic care circles, and they bring people in and out. Did you talk about the litigation side of things? Did, was that a question to talk about the notification side of things? The legal, legal part and litigation. And all oh, legal. Um, if you're talking about the HIPAA and consent, so well, okay, so there's actually two separate things. We um, are following all the HIPAA processes we need to for when we do get information from a, a, a covered entity. And so we are a business associate under HIPAA and we've followed those guidelines, uh, documented everything we're doing there. As far as consent goes, uh, we still want, con we, we need to have consent from the patient for family members to see anything given by the covered entities. So we've just built that into the system where it's just a gateway. Uh, the family member can work through the doctor or work with us to get us consent from the patient, but it has to come from the patient. And the email will be something like, uh, depending on whether you have consent or not, etc., a visit has been scheduled on this date. You know, please follow this link, and then we just make it very easy to get in um, if you'll be participating, confirm or not. But we don't triangulate information. And you know, for those of you who are familiar with HIPAA, it's just you know we're just following the rules, but being clever about it so people get the info they need without if somebody were in their account for some reason or intercepting that they wouldn't be able to triangulate, figure out who the person is. Is it just a video, audio, or is it medical records as well? Is it just video, audio, or is it medical records as well? So yeah. That's an e yeah, either or. I, um, so we're different. <coughs> I don't exactly know how to answer that. In terms of the technical video or audio, we're video. If Today, if you're on Wi-Fi, you can stream it, or of course, if you're just plugged in. Otherwise, we'll default to audio. Um, and in terms of medical <laughs> records, you know, we're treating them like medical records, and so people can be secure about that. But, um, you know, from the provider side, I, my opinion is it'll be a while before this would be considered a medical record. But the idea that we're some kind of mashup or bridge between caregiving and EHR, and that information's going to flow back and forth, yeah, I mean, there, somebody needs to get the rest of us involved with everything that's happening on the healthcare side. And that's what we're doing, and we're just letting the patients and family start their own care record around people who need it in that moment. Last question. Are uh, visits archived? So, someone who can't be on the visit live, uh, can they stream it? And so, are the visits archived, uh, recorded? In other words, recorded. so today we have disabled that. It's built into the video conferencing. You know, it's WebEx. What we're using at the moment, um, but. We are not recording it because the patient family side, almost 100% want it recorded for asynchronous information and the provider side, I think it's around 50-50 want it recorded. <laughs> and it's kind of the third rail um, because of the whole CYA. Um, I don't know if you guys know that, but you know, it's like, and we don't really want to go there right now. So um, the asynchronous part is people are on live taking notes in the care notes section and nobody needs to get too ruffled. And as we're working with some very significant medical side partners where they actually <coughs> employ the docs, then they can make that decision. We'll turn it on. Cool. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks very much.